Warning, this video may contain foul language and mech on mech mayhem. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Mech Warrior Online. This is Fuzzy Nova, and today we've got something good because today is Monday, and whatever day you're watching this on, Mondays suck. So I was like, let's bring in a hero mech, and we've got the fucking grasshopper, the M Mjolnir. Mjolnir, it's called the Mjolnir. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I've had my eye on this hero mech for a while. Um, Grasshoppers are great heavy mechs. They are the best for laser vomit, energy, all the all those type of builds. The grasshopper can hold them, and it's uh, it's no lightweight. It's a it's it's a big mech, uh, and I don't know if I have done a grasshopper video yet. So it's time to do one, and why not start it off with the Mjolnir, the hero grasshopper. First of all, the grasshopper's design is. Uh, fucking great it's a good design I like it it's that humanoid style very very thin skinny aesthetic design and the grasshopper is uh I've always liked it I'm not really sure why I haven't done a video on it yet but uh, the cool thing about the hero is that it does come with a ballistic hard point that ballistic hard point on your grasshopper is really a game game changer and um, it, 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 it's got a lot of hard points, it really does. It's got a lot of energy hard points, and every grasshopper usually does. But adding that ballistic hard point in on this hero mech is just ties the ribbon. Ties the knot. Whatever you want to say, it does. Um, but the design! Love the grasshopper. I love the name. Um, common builds on the grasshopper is usually PPCs, medium pulse lasers, large lasers, stuff like that. I've got quite a build today, and it's... Uh, it's a pretty gnarly one. So, with that said, let's take a look at the build. The Mjolnir comes with one ballistic and seven energy. It has seven energy hard points. That is a lot of energy hard points. And having that ballistic in your left arm. I know it would have been great to have that ballistic in one of your torsos, but you can't ask for everything. It's in your left arm. So, one ballistic, seven energy. AMS capable if you choose to do so. It comes with double heat sinks and endo steel that's already done for you and it has an XL280 which is 64.8 kph standard speed for a heavy so not too bad if you want to up the engine that's a great idea too. Having a grasshopper going 80 kph would be a good idea wouldn't, it wouldn't, you wouldn't lose too much tonnage honestly. I've got a lot going on for this build but we're gonna stick with this one just because make it a little bit more simple one build one video you got it a lot of ideas for this mech, but what we're doing today, LBX-10 build. We've got an LBX-10 in my left arm. Great weapon. This mech did come with a Gauss rifle, although I uh, Gauss rifle is a great weapon. I wanted to use something else. Um, so we got an LBX-10 left arm, 10 points of damage. It's got one of the longest ranges of any ballistic weapon. Um, so yeah, LBX-10 is a great weapon to use for our energy. I've got two large lasers, one in the right torso, I've got another large laser in my CT, along with a large pulse. That is a lot of large weapons there, so it is kind of hot. I've also got two medium lasers, one on my right torso, one on my left. So LBX, 10, two large, one large pulse, two mediums. Yes, it's a hot build, it very much is. You could drop your large pulse laser, your heat management will definitely go up. You could add another large laser, or you can just add a bunch of mediums. It really doesn't matter. But the punch that I get from this, it's, it's, it's a real knockout. Definitely is. Another, speaking of knockouts, another good hero mech, another good inner sphere hero mech is the Mauler knockout. I almost got that today. Uh, we'll have to do that another day. But, Grasshopper with LBX-10, what are you going to do? It's a 70 ton mech. The, uh, the mul the mul <laughs> The Mjolnir, the Mjolnir has been out for a while. As I said, I have been keeping my eye on it. It's been uh, been out for a while. The, the Crab Florentine video that I did, it was the Crab with the LBX-10 video, or the dual LBX video that I did. The, the Crab Florentine came in the same package as this mech. So, 
you got that. There's a lot of good hero mechs that you can get, and there's a lot of good hero mechs that that aren't on the store page. Um, you have to go to uh, um, the actual store page in the game here and look under battle mechs. So there's quite a few hero mechs that you're not going to find online on the um, on the PGI website. So uh, armor points, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, the Mjolnir does come with extra armor points. So I've got 92 CT, 57 torsos, 55 arms, 73 legs, 75 my left leg. Enhancements, I got a lot. I got quite a bit going on here. A lot of it is for the range and uh, ammo capacity and velocity and cooldown, a lot of that. So we'll go through this real, real quick here. Only the things that really matter. Of course, his mechs now do come with a chassis C build bonus of 30%. I think every mech does that you own. So that's pretty cool. So what we got going on here? Let's check it out. I've got an LBX spread of minus 10%. I've also got a ballistic cooldown of minus 10%. I've got LBX-10 ammo uh, capacity plus two rounds, not too shabby. LBX-2 uh, plus eight rounds, so I got my capa ammo capacity up a little bit. <clears throat> we do have a range of plus six percent, a laser duration of minus 11.25 percent. So we do got quite a bit going on here. Not too bad. I didn't fill up the whole tab. Of course I didn't, but I did get quite a few in, like 30 or 35 uh, tabs in on the, under the skill tree so yeah gotten a lot we do have four sets of class 4 jump jets it's giving us that extra lift I do have three double heat sinks so it's really um, I mean I, if I could if I could fit more I would um, but heat management is pretty bad with this uh, just because of how many large energy weapons I have LBX's do not cause much heat the two large lasers and large pulse it definitely does it's shooting in sections here you're all firing your lasers using your LBX's backup, cooling down, getting cover, coming back out, and firing. It's one of those type of builds. Although, another good build would be LBX-10 and just 7 medium lasers. That would be a very effective build. You can do a lot with this, and it's definitely worth getting. If you have not tried this mech, I would suggest it. I'm glad I got it. It's 20 bucks. There are cheaper mechs. You can't afford that one. But yes. The Mjolnir is a very, very good inner sphere heavy mech. And it's a grasshopper with a ballistic. How many times do I got to say it, huh? Anyways, not nah, good mech, good mech. I like the grasshopper. This may be my first grasshopper video. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Let's go ahead and get into a match. I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Signing on. Welcome, Fuzzy Nova. Initiating Sana feed. Gathering report. Completed. Today's course is on the Grasshopper. Originally intended as a stealthy hunter killer of light and medium mechs for the SLDF, the Grasshopper entered service in 2780 after hostilities had already ceased in the Amri Civil War. Problems integrating the original stealth systems with the chassis meant the Grasshopper missed the climactic end to the conflict. The stealth systems were ultimately removed from the final design. The untested and unorthodox mech was distributed primarily to the regular army rather than the more prestigious royal units, and within four years it could be found in most Star League regiments. Thus as the League dissolved, with the chaos of Operation Exodus and the defection of many SLDF units to the successor states, grasshoppers found their way into the various house armies one way or another. With great mobility and a predominantly short-arranged, energy-based weaponry, the Grasshopper proved itself during the First Succession War. The mech's ground speed of 64.8 km per hour was augmented by four Leviathan lifter jump jets, one pair in each leg, giving it a jumping capability of 120 meters. Revolutionary for its time. The appearance of a heavy mechs with the mobility of a lighter design caused a change in tactics, the grasshopper became known for using surprise and speed to appear suddenly in the midst of a tightly packed lance, a devastating situation should the enemy lack short-ranged weapons themselves. The use of 22 heat sinks also gave it superior heat dissipation rates compared to other heavy mechs. While its low dependence on ammunition allowed the grasshopper to operate away from established supply lines for extended periods of time. Though it could be outgunned by other mechs of similar tonnage, 
The combination of its mobility and 13 tons of standard armor allowed the grasshopper to at least inflict significant damage before being forced to withdraw. Finally, mounting its primary weapon in its center torso meant the grasshopper remained combat capable despite suffering crippling damage, including losing both arms, leading many to classify it as a zombie mech. Besides hunting down lighter machines to clear the way for heavier, less mobile mechs, the grasshopper's mobility and endurance meant it often spearheaded assaults to storm fortifications, led flanking attacks to hit the enemy from the rear, and served as backup brawler for companies of light and medium mechs. Online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems. The grasshopper Mjolnir. The Hero Grasshopper Good Mac man Really is uh, If only I could fit Heavy Goss on this That would be great Anyways we're working with an LBX-10 Two large lasers Two mediums and a large pulse Looks like we already got Yep Let's go ahead and Fire away there, taking some return fire already. Uh, the Grasshopper Mjolnir, it, it comes with extra armor points, so it's got more armor than standard variants do. Um, it can it can really it can take a beating. It can. Um, you can definitely brawl on this thing if it comes down to it. Uh, as I said earlier, um, using you know, even an AC-10 uh, would be good in seven medium lasers. Um, Heat-wise, and that would probably give me more room to put in uh, some more double heat sinks as well. So that's another good... There's a lot of builds uh, for this thing. A lot. The Goss Rifle, as I said, it does come with a Goss Rifle. It came with a PPC as well. Um, so it definitely it came as a long-ranged uh, type of fighter. But uh, I kind of made it a, a closer ranged here. Large lasers, large lasers don't have that bad of a range with the enhancements that I got. Of course, it up the up the range a ton. But uh, as you can see, it's really hot. It's really really hot. So um, yeah, shooting here uh, carefully, making your shots count. Am I gonna make it? Yes. No. 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 And this was, this did come with the, this was like the first uh, hero pack that ever came out with the Inner Sphere ones. It came out before the clan heroes did. And uh, this is definitely part of it. There were some good, good mechs in that pack. Um, I, I would suggest browsing it if you haven't. New target acquired. Trying to push this Highlander 2C back. He's backing off. Get off the top, buddy. Need to watch my left. Battlemaster is uh, looking at me there. Let's see if we can hit this rifleman. He's coming up. Target destroyed. He's down. Target acquired. New target acquired. Let's take a little peek. See over here. Oh. Uh oh, look at all that. New target acquired. The medium lasers are on the, the, well, I have them. They are on the lower side, and you do have the ballistic in your left arm. It is low, it's not that high mounted, so, um, certain shots you have to do from certain angles. We are putting some damage in on that Mad Cat. There he goes, he's down. Mad Cat is down. Looks like they're making a break for it. Oh!
Yeah! Eat it! New target acquired. Target destroyed. New target acquired. All right. Oh, I missed. Our um, capping points are actually basically tied right now. Fuel at twenty five percent. Fuel at zero percent. New target acquired. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, engage these uh, bastards out here. Trying to get some last kill. They are heading cap points, though. Um, and I have seen the uh, enemy team win because the last couple mechs were lights. And, uh... Stormcrow. You dummy. Alright, Stormcrow's down. <clears throat> I thought there was another one out here. Target acquired. Heat level critical. Target destroyed. Heat okay. Oh shit, there's Target another. What do we got? We got a Black Knight. Black Knight rushing in. Very hot build, but as you can see, it's it's uh it's doable and it's not that bad. But it's got a sleek design. I love the design of the grasshopper. It's nice. Uh, there's a DC. We're gonna finish up capping here. That honestly shouldn't even matter. Uh, we we're not that far behind. It's not gonna be a win from the grave for them. Unfortunately, not. Come on, baby. But yeah, surprisingly, firing two large lasers and a large pulse. Um, it's not a big of a, as big as of a heat spike as I thought it would be, but uh, it's st it's still it's still a large heat spike. Bring cool shot. That'll help. Not bad. We got a kill, not assist, 420 damage, almost 400,000 C bills. That was a good match. It's a good mech. Very good heavy mech. So much potential. Let's play another match. Tormira Borg, Razal Haig, freedom fighter, soldier, mech warrior, officer and later politician of the Free Raz Al Haig Republic. He was father of martyred aerospace pilot Tyra Myra Borg. Tor Myra Borg was born on Gunsberg in Draconese combined during the twilight years of the 30th century. At the formation of the Free Raz Al Haig Republic, Myra Borg was serving as the executive office of the first tier. He was best friends with his unit's commanding officer, Christian Mansdotter.
During the Ronin Wars, as Oberst Lodgnant, he commanded half of the regiment when it was split off to help fight off several Garita Ronin units. His most noted combat was in September of 3034, when his command Lance was caught in ambush by the remains of the 211th Mechanized Assault Command. His mercenary support unit, Dragon's Breath sustained heavy damage. They cited a vague clause in their contract so as to withdraw from combat. This left Myra Borg's unit without any additional help. The fighting ended badly, with his mech being last to go down. During his ejection from his grasshopper, one of the renegade armored units von Luckner's shells clipped his mech's head. Myra Borg woke several hours later, in a mash unit spared with severe injuries. The enemy fire had given him a great deal of scarring, which left his spinal cord bruised and nearly took his eye. Christian convinced Prince Magnuson to reward him. In turn for his dedication and patriotism, he was reward rank of Aldher of Gunsberg. In 3036 Tor was injured in combat again, when his mech received a head hit while fighting remains of the Gotterdammerung Society Mercenary Command which had been active during the Ronin Wars few years earlier. This time, his injuries left him unable to walk and bound to a wheelchair. Despite his injuries, Tor kept active and the defense of the country, now having gained the nickname the Iron Jarl. He and his friend Man's daughter had different political policies however, despite this he was promoted to General of the Rastat province by his old friend's recommendations. Canyon Network in the Grasshopper Mjolnir. Uh, yes. Same build, LBX, two large la LBX-10, two large lasers, large pulse, two mediums. Ugh. Domination. Domination. All right, boys, let's take him out. Get to some cover here. Got some heavies on that ridge. Oops. Yeah, let's go over here. I need to see what's going on because I really don't know what's going on at the moment and I feel kind of trapped. I like knowing what's going on. Oh shit, they're coming up the ridge here. Oh, airstrike. Let's move it. Ah, man. I just got hit with heavy goss. There is a heavy goss sniper around here somewhere. My CT. Yeah, I got pegged. Let these guys take it for a second. Get a shot at this this bad big boy right here. It's too crowded. There's an Arctic Wolf with uh, SRMs. I'm sitting on top of a mech right now. Damn. I landed on top of its head. Although it is hot, the sheer amount of, of power that it can, it can dish out is, uh, is pretty awesome. Alright guys, come on. It's a clusterfuck over here. 
I don't know how many times I have died because I couldn't back up. New target acquired. New target acquired. Let's focus on these uh, guys in the alley here. Get them out for oh, shit. Watch our heat, watch our heat. New target acquired. Heat level critical. This blood asp is almost done. Taking him out is gonna be a good move. If we can just get down. Damn it! <laughs> I hate that. I hate when that happens. Always happens to me. Target acquired. It's gonna be a quick video. I've gotta hit the hay after this. Freaking wolfhound. Run for your life. Come on, alright, we're alright, come on. Nope, there he is. Alpha! Oh, we got him! <laughs> we alpha him. Oh, I just blew a hole right through that wolfhound. Ripped him in half. But anyways, don't leave it up to me to, to, to figure if, if the uh, the Mjolnir or Grasshopper is a, a great mech or not. Try it out yourself. I just don't do it justice. These matches did not do it justice. It's just a really good and fun mech. The Grasshopper is always a good mech. A lot of different builds. I'm sure I'll do a video on this again soon with a different build because it's a really fun mech. And it deserves a lot more attention. So with that said, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Fuzzy Nova, out.